Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So we're back with part two of how to start a dropshipping business. Last week I posted part one where I went over the selection of the products you're going to be building your business around. Today we're going to be covering suppliers. It should be a relatively short video because a lot of people tend to kind of overthink the selection of a supplier. So today I'll take you through kind of like my top tips to kind of keep you on the straight and narrow to make sure you don't overcomplicate things and certainly don't delay starting your business trying to get the perfect supplier lined up. So without any further ado, we'll jump straight in. And as I did before, I'm gonna start with a tip um, to kind of help solve one of the problems where I see a lot of people who tend to kind of um, disrupt themselves. So the tip is don't hide your weaknesses. If you wouldn't be happy, neither would your customers. So something I see a lot of people do is they will have a poor supplier lined up or there'll be something that they're trying to hide as part of their business because they know deep down that it's not adequate. It's not as good as it should be or as good as it has to be. And instead of addressing the issue, they try and hide it. And hiding anything from your customers is only gonna have a negative impact on your business, not a positive one. There's a great book by Alex Hormozy. I'm sure most people, most of you will have heard of this guy. Um, it was his second book. I can't remember the name of it now, but he speaks specifically about this point, um, how if you hide your weaknesses, it's going to leave questions in your customer's mind. And unanswered questions are a negative thing. You're much better off being upfront and honest about it and trying to spin it into a positive thing. So for example, when it comes to dropshipping business, the biggest negativity is obviously gonna be your delivery times. So try and kind of like spin this to be a positive thing in the fact that if you're selling personalized products, as an example, if delivery takes two weeks, address that on your product page, address it with your customer and say, delivery takes two weeks. This is because we want to make sure we make it to the best of our abilities and we make it exactly how you expect it. We make it as high quality as possible for you so that when you receive it, you're going to absolutely love it rather than kind of rush the manufacturing process. We'd rather take those extra few days to make sure it's absolutely perfect for you. And for most people, that will be a positive thing rather than a negative thing. And waiting those two weeks for delivery, it's not going to be an issue. So if you're struggling with this one, leave a comment down below. Um, I do read every single comment. So I'll try and help you as much as I can. So on to suppliers then. It's a simple and generic um, tip, but start on Google. I'm not gonna give you a list of suppliers because just <laughs> spoon feeding you isn't really gonna help. You need to be able to run this business yourself. You cannot run a business by going to YouTube and searching for a question every time you have a problem. You need to be able to, to deal with these things yourself. And part of that is finding a supplier and as straightforward as it is, just starting on YouTube on Google, sorry, just do a Google search for dropshipping supplier to the UK, dropshipping supplier to the US, and you will find several options. Yes, it's going to take time, but it will be a worthwhile process going through. You will soon get to learn what's out there. If I was to give you a list as an example of say five or six suppliers, on that list of suppliers, there may not be the very best supplier for your products because there is no one supplier that is perfect for every product. You may have to work with several, and until you do that research and get the quotations, the prices, the delivery times from all these different suppliers, make a list of them, create a column, create a Google sheet. On one side, put the list of the names of the supplier, followed by the cost of the product, the cost of the shipping and the shipping times, and compare them against each other. It may be a case in which you end up working with five different suppliers because the five products on your site um, are all suited individually to that specific supplier. And doing a Google search, you may discover a supplier that you've never even heard of and never encountered that nobody else has found before, but it's perfect for your product. If I was to give you a list of five or six suppliers, there would be no need for you to do that research. So it's super, super important that you kind of take responsibility for this um, and learn how to find suppliers, learn how to talk to them. 
most of the biggest suppliers too, you don't have to talk to anyone. You sign up, create an account, um, and you go about business that way. As long as you're a legitimate business and you do things by the book, they'll have no problems working with you, um, and you'll be able to integrate them into your site, no problems at all. Third point then, drop shipping suppliers are just a means to an end. A lot of people, again, they kind of overcomplicate this process, um, and they look at their drop shipping supplier thinking they're gonna be working with them forever. You shouldn't be working with them forever, to be honest, because once you've validated that a product idea works, to continue drop shipping it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. Um, why would you continue to buy one unit at a time, especially when it's coming from a Chinese supplier and it's going to take up to two weeks to arrive? It's going to be more expensive. It's not going to be private labeled and it's going to harm your business. It's not the most efficient way to set your business up for success. So dropshipping suppliers are just a mean to an end. If you have a week of your supplier letting you down, it's not the be all and end all, it's not the end of the world. Switching suppliers is actually um, a very, very easy thing to do, especially the bigger suppliers because they do have apps on the Shopify app store. And it's just a case of linking them up to somebody else. With apps like DS's, CJ, BS, they all have their own apps. So it's just a case of when the order comes in, you can place it with the supplier that's best suited. If you get a supplier that goes out of business, runs out of stock, starts taking ages to fulfill, um, starts shipping poor quality products, it's not the end of the world. Just be a decent business, apologize to your customers, refund the ones that want a refund and move on to the next supplier. However, once you've had a few weeks of successful and profitable selling, that is when you should start looking beyond drop shipping suppliers and you should start looking at private labeling and sourcing a bulk quantity so you can have X amount of private labeled stock on a shelf somewhere that you're 3PL. It may even be your drop shipping supplier to be fair. Depending on some of the people that you work with, they offer both options. However, as a preference, you should always, always, always go local, which is the next step. So start local or go local. If you do end up using a, in fact, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So go with China last, start on Google, try and find a supplier that's in the local country you want to sell in. As a last resort, go with China. Once you've had a few weeks of profitable selling of a product and you were drop shipping it, to sell that product profitably, having a stock quantity somewhere that's branded and arriving a lot quicker is so much easier it's gonna be so much better for your bottom line whatever your cost per purchase is as a drop shipper there's that cost per purchase will go down um, and your costs will also go down so it's kind of like a win-win you know, on both ends of your business you'll be making more sales and your actual costs will go down too if you do it correctly of course and when i say correctly in the fact that once you have a private labeled product you bring on people to help you advertise it. You bring on um, customers to do video reviews. You pay actors, you get user-generated content, you get influencers to feature your branded product. Somebody speaking and showing a branded product instantly sets you apart, sets you apart from all of the kind of dodgy dropshipping stores that most people have encountered on social media nowadays. Okay, moving on less than two weeks or it's a no-go um, the reason I've put this one in here is because if things start to go really really well when I say really really well I mean you're doing consistently hundreds of pounds or dollars in sales every single day you're gonna be spending quite a bit on advertising um, and if you end up having to refund the majority of your customers it's going to significantly drain your bank account all that money you put on to ads so let's say you're making two grand a day in sales you're probably going to be spending in around sort of 500 to a thousand pound a day on ads um, if it leads to lots of chargebacks not only is it going to hurt your bank account it's going to hurt your ad performance, it's going to hurt your feedback scores, it's going to lead to lots of chargebacks, which is not a good thing. You're going to start popping up on people's radars that you don't want to pop up on. Um, the platform you're advertising on, the bank that you're working with, the payment providers, um, probably Shopify themselves as well if it, if it really does go that far. So it's super, super important. And I've found from experience that anything longer than two weeks is, is hard to negotiate with a customer. Um, however, within two weeks, 
there is some kind of room in there um, to keep those customers sweet that still aren't happy with either a voucher code, money off their order, a partial refund, whatever it may be. So try and stick to this rule if you can. Anything that's going to arrive in more than two weeks is a no-go. Try and stay away from them. Moving on. Branded packaging is a bonus but not essential in the beginning. So I've worked with a lot of people who want to go straight to this point, um, which is great. Wanting to do things proper and by the book from the beginning is a really good thing to do, um, but it's not necessary. Let's go down this route. It's going to take you more time and it's going to take you more money, um, which means there's more at risk financially and time wise. So in the beginning, it's, it's not 100% necessary um, to be successful. In the beginning, it's just a proof of concept. You just wanna get a few weeks under your belt of profitable selling before you then start investing, investing and more reinvesting into your business. Because, and the reason because of this is if you back a product, and spend all this time and money getting it packaged, private labeled, only to find out that you cannot sell it. You've spent all of that money for no reason. You could have just drop shipped it without it being private labeled, without in its packaging to find out that it's not going to work. So make sure you kind of, within reason, keep costs to a minimum, keep time to a minimum, so you can get that proof of concept and that validation before you then go down that route. Once you have that, even just two weeks of profitable selling, it then kind of gives you that more security in knowing the facts that when you do reinvest or put more money into the business for these things, that you, that is going to work out um, as well. Plus, drop shipping from China, white labeled, Typical drop shipping store, that's pretty much as as basic as it gets. So if you can make it work at that level, just think of how good it can be once it's branded. But again, instead of kind of skipping that initial basic drop shipping business and going straight to this one, unless you are experienced and know exactly what you're doing, um, it doesn't make any sense in my opinion. So um, branded packaging, private labeling, it's not the be all and all in the beginning. Um, try and get a proof of concept first. Okay, next. This one's really important. It's just common sense, really. Um, get three quotations for the products you want to sell. Um, three things that you want to know is the unit price, shipping price, and shipping time as a minimum. Again, get your spreadsheet. I think I mentioned it before in the video, actually. Um, get your different suppliers on the left-hand column, followed by the unit price, shipping price, and shipping time. Do this for each product, and then just go with the supplier that has the best and most suitable ones. A fourth one you could add in as well is reviews, and um, reviews is super important, but this is gonna vary depending on the supplier. Obviously on AliExpress you can see the reviews. If you're working with a reputable agent, then, you, then they should be providing a quality product. If you're going with somebody that is brand new, nobody's ever heard of before, they're a new startup, worst case scenario or if in doubt order a sample the amount of people i work with or have seen start dropshipping businesses in the past that don't order samples because they're in so much of a rush to get the business up and running and making some money they need money 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 quick 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 skipping this corner is a big corner to skip and one not worthwhile either waiting an extra two weeks so you have time for the actual product to arrive from the actual supplier you're going to be working with is not the end of the world and this really can make the difference between success and failure let's say that product actually takes three weeks to arrive and the product when it does arrive is broken or it's poor quality you, you could potentially get two weeks or three weeks of selling if it takes that long to arrive. And if things go really well in the beginning, you could be talking over 500 orders. You could be talking a thousand orders of a bag of rubbish that's going to apply, uh, be delivered to your customer. So it's a big risk to take. So make sure that you are 100% confident in your supplier. If you're not, if in doubt, order some samples. The other benefit too to ordering some samples is it gives you an opportunity to record some of your own content. You don't have to go on camera, have it in your hand, film in your hand with the product or send it off to an influencer or find somebody who is comfortable going on camera. There's endless examples in fact which I'll cover in part three, um, which is, or part four sorry, which is the marketing and the creatives, um, which is probably the most important part, or certainly up there with the product at least. So. With that being said then, I've covered all the things I wanted to when it comes to suppliers. 
If there's anything I've missed out, call me out on it. Um, make sure you let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure you subscribe so you can tune in to part three. And last but certainly not least, if you're still watching this video, I really do appreciate the support. It means a lot. And the people who watch these videos through, it really helps these videos reach more people. Um, if you're enjoying these videos and you like um, the style and the content and you like the idea of working with myself, I do have a mentorship program. If you would like some more information on that, um, check out the links in the video description down below. Um, it's a quick link that you click. It takes you through to kind of like um, a series of questions, five or six questions, super quick, super easy. It's kind of like a way of gatekeeping to keep the time wasters out, to be honest. Um, I want to only work with those people who are serious about dropshipping, not those people who are going to jump from shiny thing to shiny thing. If you are serious about giving this a go and making this work so you can improve your lives for the better, click that link, fill out the questions. It's a chance for me to get to know where you are now where you want to be in one, two or three months time with my help. And if all looks good and you have a realistic goal that I am confident I can help you achieve, it will take you through to my calendar where you can select a time and a date for me and you to jump on a call and have a chat in some more depth. Thanks guys. I appreciate you watching these videos and maybe meet you soon on the call. Thanks.